I'd like to sort of walk us through this idea about uh, the Bohr model of the atom and how he came to uh, figure out his model and what it means for us. Now, Niels Bohr was from Denmark, and we can kind of see his atom here, you know, with the, uh, the circles, you know, the electrons going around, but there's more to it about uh, where those circles can be. Now, we're getting our evidence, or he got his evidence for that, from uh, the hydrogen spectrum tube. So we were able to see that in class, and we could see that, you know, it gave off some light, and looking through it with our rainbow glasses, then we can see that there was a red line, there was a blue-green line, a blue-violet line, and a violet line. So these colors here are the ones that we're going to be using, and we want to explain, you know, where they came from. Now, right above it as reference, uh, here we have a regular spectrum from white light. Now, this is actually from the sun, and it turns out if you look at light from the sun, there are some lines that are missing. And those are missing because, you know, in the uh, cooler areas on the outside of the sun, there are places where the uh, light is absorbed. So this stuff up here at the top would be considered an um, uh, absorption spectrum. And then the one down here below it would be the uh, uh, emission spectrum. Now, the idea for the atom, when we were talking about uh, Rutherford, is saying that the atom, the electrons are spending all their time here close to the nucleus, down here in the center. Um, but the difference is that the electrons for Rutherford were just kind of going around in circles uh, around the uh, nucleus. And we're saying now is that not only are they going around, but if you zap them with electricity like we're doing, then you can get them to jump from one part of the atom to another. So let's say the electron would be spending its time here. Now that's in the n equals 1 level. And when we see n equals 1, we have a name for that. We call that the ground state. And that's where the electron is 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, so when we zap it, then it gets a higher energy. So it could go up to a higher energy. And then when it does, it doesn't stay there. It drops back down and gives off some light. Now it could also be at a higher energy, and it could drop down from, like, say, level 3 down to level 2, or it could drop from level 3 down to level 1, or it could drop from level 4 down to level uh, 3, and it could drop from level 4 down to level 1. You know, so all these possible transitions are possible. Now, we get to... Uh, this kind of a model here, instead of going around circles, then one of the things Bohr was able to do was to come up with an equation where you could say, okay, we can figure out the energy of the uh, electron. And at the first, and if we all we have to do is say, for n equals 1, that's a variable, substitute 1 into this equation, and we would come up with this first energy. So he came up with a constant, and that's the Rydberg constant and Planck's constant, and the speed of light. When you multiply those together, you get this number here, uh, 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So if you take that number and divide by 1 squared, then you get two point, negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18. If you substitute in a 2, then you get negative 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19, and so forth. And so if you put in 3, you get this value. Now, one of the ideas is, you know, if you have n equals infinity, you know, where in, that is uh, so much energy that the electron takes off, we're going to call that uh, energy zero. So it's a little odd that we have zero at the top and all these negative numbers down below, but the idea that they, when uh, the people who made up this equation, they were saying, well, how much energy would it take, would you have to add to an, equa an electron in the ground state to get it to leave? So you would have to add 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And then what if you were starting here? How much energy would you have to add? You'd have to add 5.45 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So for each of these, to get the electron to leave, you have to add this much energy. 
and that this kind of a numbering system, zero at the top and a negative down below, is useful for that kind of a question. Now we're going to we did the same thing. We're asking you to do that on our worksheet. The only thing here different is we're using a slightly different value of r, and the r we're using is uh, 218 times 10 to the minus 20 joules in this case. So uh, we're just moving the decimal point and changing the 10 to there. And that's just so we can graph this a little bit better. And when we do that, we get a scale version of uh, Bohr energy levels. And we can see that we have uh, electrons way down here at the bottom, okay, ground state. And then when n equals 2, so this is negative 218, negative here would be a negative 54, then we'd have like about negative uh, 26 and if we calculate those and we could graph them on our paper like this. Now let me clear off these uh, ink. Now we had another part of our worksheet where we took the values and we took the values for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet and we calculated what their energies are and we plotted them on this little part of the graph. So you can see what's happening is this graph and this other graph, these are both the same size so these are to the same scale. Now we're saying that the electron can jump from place to place and if it does then uh, it gives off light. So here the light that we have, here's our red line up here, here's our red line here at the top and we also have our blue green line over here and we have our blue violet line and we have our violet line. We kind of want to know, well, where did those come from? So, the transitions are happening. You know, they start here at level 1. They could go from 2 down to 1, 3 down to 1, 4 down to 1, 5 down to 1. All these possible transitions. And we have those here on our uh, scale picture. So, the arrows represent an electron moving from one place to another. And so we want to measure that. I'm going to take my little energy ruler, put it down here at the bottom of the arrows, and we can see what happens is if you have a, a, an electron in level 2 going to level 1, that that arrow is so long that it is much longer than anything that we can see. We could see an arrow that would get to, uh, let's say, to uh, oh, violet. We could get an arrow that would maybe come, you know, this long. We could see that. That would be a violet arrow and an arrow this long, that would be maybe a red arrow, but we can see that the arrow that goes from level 2 to level 1, that is too high of energy for us to see. Let's try the ones that go to level 2. So I will put our ruler here at the bottom of level 2, and now we can see that if we go from two, 3 down to 2, that, that arrow is going to be a red arrow. So that would be visible for us. So the idea here is on our little circular graph that this red must be uh, an electron that jumped from level 3 down to level 2. Level 3 down to level 2. In the same way, let's look at what would it be if we went from 4 down. So 4 down to 2, that would, look, that would be here between the blue and the green. So that one would also be visible, and that's where we're getting this little bit of light when the electron jumps from level 4 down to level 2. And go back again to our graph and see if we went from 5 to 2, that would be between the blue and the violet. So we would get another one. Our picture here is not big enough. And the same way here for violet. Move my ruler over a little bit. For violet here if we went from 6 down to 2. So those would be ones that we would be able to see. So this guy here is from 6 down to 2 and this was from 5 down to 2. Now the ones that are dropping to level 3, if I put this here, then you can see that going from anything dropping down to level 3 uh, is too small. It's in the infrared range. So there's none of these that we would be able to see. They're all going to be too small, these little arrows. Anything beyond that are going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. So 
So any time that the only ones that we're going to actually be able to see are the transitions that go from to level 2. So something 3 to 2 is the red, 4 to 2 is the blue-green, 5 to 2 is the blue, and 6 to 2 is the purple. And we should have those kind of memorized. Those are called the Balmer series of lines. The ones that drop down to level 1, they have a different name. Those are called the Lyman series, and those are in the ultraviolet. The ones that drop to level 3, 4, 5, and 6, those have names also, but we don't care. So the only ones we really need to know about are the ones that drop down to level 2. And that's what we want to know about the Bohr atom.